All right, so what you guys are going to be making today is a game like this. Um, this is based on Firebase, and check it out. If I move one piece like this, it moves on the other window. You see, if I move this guy over here, it moves on the other window. And if I move this guy over here, it moves in the other window, and so on. Okay, so that's what we need. Um, and it works with Firebase. I'm going to show you how it works, but first, let me tell you what your assignment is going to be. Your assignment is going to be to make this move counter also synchronized to the server. Okay, that's part one of the assignment. It's going to have to be on a separate object and then, then the board data structure on the server. And part two is going to be add a button down here that you can click and it will reset the state of the board to zero. Okay, so first of all, let me show you how I made this functionality for it to connect to the server, you know, to Firebase and be able to have real-time checkers. So the first thing, in when you're using Firebase, the first thing that you need is, you know, a variable Firebase. That's a new Firebase and, you know, this is your Firebase application. So you have to create an account, you have to create an application and then you have to get the name of your application. Okay, and then for our checker game, Firebase that child game one. Okay, so it's basically a reference to a specific object inside this database. Let me show you what that database looks like right now. My intense heat three to five database just has a game one object, and that game one object has you know twenty four different objects for each of the checker pieces, right? So checker piece number zero is going to be coordinate x one at one zero. So if we look at it, checker piece number zero is this one, and yes, it is at x coordinate zero y one. Right, um, or rather the other way around, x coordinate 1, y 0, um, and then so on, all the pieces go. The way that I'm storing the pieces is I know that they get added sequentially. I looked at the provided.js and I noticed that they get added sequentially. So, you know, this is piece 0, this is piece 1, this is piece 2, this is piece 3. They get added to the DOM sequentially, so they're always going to come in the same order. As the as they got added to the DOM, so I'm taking advantage of that fact in my communication. So let me show you the two main things that I had to do in order to to implement this. Well, first of all, I could have just stored, you know, my jQuery piece object to the server, right? And that would have been probably simpler. However, it would have also been, it would have also consumed a lot, lot, lot more um, bandwidth because the jQuery object has a lot of things, a lot of information there, and not uh, not all of it can be written to a database. So I would have had to convert the functions into strings. I would have had to I, actually, it might have gotten even more complicated. So what I did is basically um, I created this function, build pieces array, which takes all the pieces object, the jQuery pieces object, which is an object that contains all of these and figures out a simple object out of them. So let me show you what it looks when it's stored. You see? So all the information that, that the first um, checkers piece has, you know, if I select this guy with jQuery, I'm going to get a bunch of information, right? I get, I don't, I, I don't care about any of that information. All I care is, is about is what class it has, where they, whether it has light or dark and what position it's in. So that one is at x1, y0. The next one over is at x3, y0, and it has light class. Okay, so basically I just go one by one through the pieces array, creating little objects that just have color x and y, and storing that to an array. So that's what we see here. I create an empty array, and then I go through each of the piece objects, and then I create an object. I use an auxiliary function that already comes in provided.js, which is this one, get chords. And uh, once I get that, I get an object with X and Y, and I add a color property to it. You know, that just basically, if, if the E has class light, then the color property is light. Otherwise, the color property is dark. And then I add it to the array pieces, right? At the very end, I return pieces. So by the time that this uh, jQuery each is done, my pieces array will contain little objects that have color x and y for every single item that has the piece class. 
okay? So, basically, in a nutshell, again, what this does is it looks at the board, figures out where the pieces are, and creates one little object corresponding to each piece that just has the class, whether it's light or dark, the X position and the Y position on the board. So this is position 0, 0, this is position 1, 1, this right here is position um, X, 1, and Y, 0, 1, 2, 3, okay, and so on. Now, this one does the opposite, okay, so it receives an array like, like of that kind, right, where it just has little objects that say the class, the X, and the Y, and then it goes through each piece object, right, and it applies this function to each piece object, and it looks at the index in this array. So for my piece, um, my jQuery selector that selects all elements with a piece class, right, that's going to return an array with um, all these guys in it, right? So I look at element 0, and then I get what came from the server in element 0, and I set the position of that element 0 to be what the server says. So that's what I'm doing here, one by one. For each one of these, I'm grabbing what the server said the position of that guy should be and set it and change its position to that guy, to what the server says. Okay, now how did I incorporate this into the actual program? The, it was two steps. Um, if we look at the provided.js, we have document ready. This is very well commented, so you can easily follow. Here you're creating all the, um, all the square elements of the board. Here you're setting them up so that you know they, they have the correct colors. Here you're creating 24 pieces. Um, here you're adding the classes to the different pieces. Here you're repositioning all the pieces that are that have the like the class light, and here you're repositioning all the pieces that have the class dark. And right here, after that default you know initial positioning is done, that's when I did checkers game on value. So what does that do? Checkers game is who? Checkers game is the reference to the Firebase um, game one child, right? So checkers game is a variable that basically points to this object right here. By the way, if you wanted to implement multiple game rooms, all you'd have to do is, you know, in the very beginning, give the person, the user, when they go to your checkers website, give the user um, a little modal pop-up box asking them whether they want to join a game or they want to create a new game, right? If they want to create a new game, then your child would be game and then something that doesn't exist yet. That would be how to do it. And if they want to join a new game, you can give them an array of all the games that exist and then have them choose one and then you would create the checkers game based on that. All right? Well, anyway, where was I? So checkers game on value, what does that do? Whenever the database information pertaining to this node changes, this function is going to fire. Okay, that's all that does. And Firebase takes care of all of that for you, so whenever the information on the server changes um, for this node, which is game one, then this function is going to fire. And what does a function receive as a parameter? This snapshot object that has a lot of weird properties. I mean, didn't really understand everything that it had going on, but if you do snapshot.val, then you get uh, the exact thing. So if I do snapshot.val in this case, I would get, you know, an array where the first element is an object that says color light x1, y0, the second object is color light x3, y0, and so on for all of them. So in as soon as the server information changes, I'm calling this function. What does the function do? Move pieces based on array is the one that I created, right? So it just goes one by one through the all the objects that have the piece class and changes their CSS top and left so that it matches what the server said it should be, okay? Now, uh, all this stuff, add class movable, uh, setting up click events, that's fine. Now, this is the, the click event that's important, right? Because how does it work when we move a piece? What do we really do? So, if I'm going to move a piece, I have to click on the piece, and now there's a piece that's selected, right? and I can click on another square. So it's really when I click on another square that the move triggers, right? If I click on another square and there is a piece that's selected, that's when the move triggers. So that's what we have here, right? 
if this has class movable, right, so if the square that I'm clicking has class movable, and if there's only one selected piece, then I do all the moving stuff, right? And in the moving stuff, you know, this is what we actually did, move pieces to, whatever, increment move count, and checkers game, here's what I did. Checkers game dot set, so anytime that I move a piece, I go to checkers game, which is my reference to, you know, the Firebase object, and I use the dot set function to overwrite anything that it has and replace it with the result of this function, build pieces array. Now, what does build pieces array do again? It builds an array of objects of this kind, right, for each piece. So, basically, anytime that I move a piece, that's when I go to the server and I replace the data that, that's there with whatever new data my... Um, my my checkers game should reflect now currently so your job is going to be it's pretty simple right you have to add a, a button see a reset button so that when I click the reset button what's gonna happen well I'm gonna set the state I'm gonna do the same thing checkers game that set but I'm gonna set it to an object such that you know it's the initial state of the checkers game so you know the first one should be uh, x1, y0, the second one should be at x3, y0, and so on. And all the black ones should be like down here and all these things. Okay? So, that's what you need to do for the reset button. And for the increment move, for the move count, you need to have a move count variable somewhere in the server. Separately, maybe add it to the end of game one or something. Um, or, it could be separate. It could be game one move count or something. That's probably the better idea to do it separately. So you need to do those two things. And if you get finished with that too quickly, if this is not enough of a challenge for you, then I challenge you to build functionality to have multiple games. Okay, so have game two, game three, game four, and then you prompt the user when they first load the page, uh, or maybe you can even do it in a separate in a separate page. Um, you can ask them, you know, what game they want, whether they want to join a game or they want to create a new game and then react accordingly. And all you kind of have to do for that is just um, this variable is going to change. So you have to intersect the, pro the program right here, right? So that the server, uh, like you, you, you halt the user and you halt the execution of the program until the person gives you this. Actually, you don't even necessarily have to halt the execution of the program. You can just give him a modal you can start, you know, initialize checkers game, as like this, game one, right? And then give them a modal, and then just change the value of this variable whenever, depending on what they click on the modal. Yeah, that's another thing you could do. All right, so that's going to be your assignment for today and tomorrow, and that's going to be, like, you know, the final exam, if you will.